What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for Chasing um, Atlanta, Season 3, Episode 10. Look, man down. I am sick. I'm home sick. I think it's a combination of the weather and my allergies, y'all. One minute is 80 degrees. The next minute is 50 degrees. I just... So, bear with me um, uh, while I get through this. So, this episode, we start off the first... Um, the first scene we see is Q and Jaylon, Lauren, excuse me, Lauren. And um, they're basically discussing, you know, Lauren said that she hadn't really been speaking to Q because she was really upset with him. She feels, and she just feels betrayed. She just feels like, and I, I, I see both sides of this coin. And in this scene, I really feel for Jaylon. Y'all know Jaylon is, I'm sorry, Lauren isn't my favorite person. But in this scene, I really, really felt for her from the point of view of, I did not realize how bad things got with her and her situation. And for her to be the type of person she is, for her to share how bad things got, you know, she's good for putting on uh, airs and putting on the appearance that she got it all together and everything is great and everything is perfect. But when she said she was sleeping in her store and she didn't have nothing and she had to start all the way over. You know, if you follow her on social media, you would never know it got that bad with her. Now, we did see where Gardini threw, threw some jabs out um, saying that all her furniture was in her store and that kind of stuff. But for her to act, openly admit that that's how bad things got, I really felt for her in that moment. I really did. Um, and even if she was exaggerating, I do think that she... Because we know that for a fact Gardini had her LLC or LLD. And we know for a fact that that's, you know, it, it affected her business. So anyway, but what I got from Q was, look, I'm cool with Gardini and I'm cool with you. And both of y'all know that. And I don't let either one of y'all talk about the other one. Now, what happened was, it sounds like we were born, went back to um, Lauren and told Lauren about the conversation that they had at the little, the little office area. Because she even knew about the coffee cup. You know, and, you know, j Lam was like, when you don't say something, that means you're going along with it. And Q said something in that scene, and I don't know if nobody else caught it. Q said something in that scene that I thought was very interesting. He said, in real, real life, I don't let him talk about you. He knows not to talk about you. But, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't have the exact quote. But basically, what I got from that was, when we're doing this show and we're shooting a scene... I let him do his thing because it's, it's for the scene. It's funny. He's going to throw his shade. That's what we're here for. But when the camera's not there, I don't let him talk shit about you. I don't let him do that. And he knows not to do that. And you know what? I feel like, I feel like that's exactly what happens. Q is doing what he needs to do for the show. But because you hear Q say all the time in real, real life. So he knows how to separate what he's doing for the show versus what his real life situation is. And I really feel like that's what is going on. Um, he doesn't let Gardini talk about um, J-Long when they're having their private time. But for the show, for a scene, okay, you know, I know I'm doing this for the show. I know I'm shooting a scene. Um, and I think more people need to realize that there's a difference between what we're doing for the show and what real life is. But anyway. So then we were born walk up. They some of the shadiest motherfuckers. Now they shading Jaylon and um Q. Now J I keep saying Jaylon. Lauren, that's the same person you was about to fight over last week. You had so much loyalty to, but now you and your confessional shading the shit out of her. I'm like, come on. Like, really? So then they got into it about the whole um um slumber party situation again. Well, Q, you were having a good time. You were having a good time. I don't know why all of a sudden now it was a problem because you were having a good time. You were having fun. You were having fun. Now all of a sudden it's a problem. And Q was like, look, I don't understand. Y'all, I don't understand what y'all don't understand. I never said I wasn't having a good time and I didn't get mad. I just asked the question, why isn't Gardini here? All you had to say was they could have said, they could have given the explanation that they gave and moved on with the party. Because from Gardini's point of view and from Q's point of view, you invited me and you disinvited me, and I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Once you explain, well, sorry. Once you explain, well, 
uh, Lauren didn't feel comfortable with Gardini being there. My loyalty is to Lauren. Okay, let's move on. Let's go back to the party. But I do think it was a valid question. And I do think that you owe an explanation. You don't invite somebody somewhere and then you uninvite them. And there's, and they don't know that they did anything wrong. I mean, Gardini talked shit. Gardini was talking shit about Jaylon when you invited him to the damn slumber party. So now all of a sudden you mad about it, but you don't understand why he don't understand. Like, come on now. And I think anybody would feel some kind of way. I know I would. You invite me somewhere, then I get a text two hours before the event basically saying you're no longer invited with no explanation. Yeah. And I'm cool with my friend asking because if I were a friend, I would ask. I'd be like, yeah, so why she can't come again? You know what I mean? So anyway, that was that. So then we got to a scene where um, Lauren is in the studio. She's still working on her... um. Her EP and the person that she's in the studio with come to find out is Q's boyfriend slash ex-boyfriend. Now I know Q was dating this guy who I know he's connected to Queen Supreme Court because I know that um following you know TS Madison and stuff, I know Q would be at a lot of her shows and I know that Q traveled. So I didn't know exactly what his boyfriend did with, with the show, but I know that he was connected to the show because he traveled with the um when the show went on the road and that kind of thing. And what we found out was that <clears throat> Um, I forgot his name, but this guy and Q, they're still very much in love. They still want to be together. However, they moved a little too fast and they feel like they need to take a step back. And he was like, you know, I feel like me and Q will end up together. But for right now, we just, you know, we hooked up. We both said we weren't really looking for anything. And next thing you know, we were in this full blown relationship and it just went really fast. And, um, you know, we need to just, we just need to kind of take a step back and just move a little slower. And Jaylon was like, I'm sorry, y'all. Lauren was like, that ain't what Q said. Q said that you, you know, I mean, he didn't say this to him, but he was like, the story I'm getting from Q is a totally different story. You know, Q was like, he's cheating on me. He's doing this. He's doing that. And, you know, Q has really been going through it on his end because Q was really into this guy. I I, I hate to cross stuff and, and go here and there, but um, Ty Couture TV, shout out to Ty. He did an interview with Q um, a few months back before he left, you know, um, Ty left Atlanta. And he did an interview with Q. And Q was like a giddy little schoolboy. He was so in love with this guy. And he was talking about how much they would, you know, you could just tell. And again, if you follow Q on social media, he would post about him. So Q was really going through it, especially if there was infidelity or accusations of infidelity. It sounds like it's bad. Um, but I wish them the best because I like you and I want, I just, I, I want you to be happy. I like you. Um, I don't know personally, but I like him. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but Lauren also, this gave her an opportunity to reflect on her situation with her Q member from last season. Um, and her Q was a cutie and I know he don't play for my team, but honey, he is a cutie. Okay. Um, and we, Again, y'all know I'll bring shit in. That's so she said that that's what her cue was trying to tell her was that they were moving too fast and things were just going too fast for him. And she said, you know, that made me realize that it wasn't that he didn't love me or didn't want to. I'm paraphrasing for her, okay? Didn't want to be with me or whatever. It was just things were moving too fast. And so I realized now that I got to go back, rewind, and take it from the top and try to work through my relationship. And if you follow either one of them on social media, you know that they're back together. And I'm happy for them because they make a really cute couple. I do. I think they do. So then we see the um, shock of the season so far. We see this episode had a lot of Miss um, Lauren in it. We see Lauren going on an interview and she said, you will be surprised to find out who I'm doing this interview with. And I absolutely was. Come to find out it was with Montel. And Montel invited Lauren to the interview. Um, I believe there would be an interview. It looked like maybe it was a podcast or something like that because it was like a green screen. Um, and I feel like they were talking about entrepreneurs in Atlanta because they were talking about their brands and things of that nature. You know, Montel's thing was, this is how real entrepreneurs do to try to help each other out. Like I put the bullshit aside and wanted to invite, I, I don't know if they were looking for a celebrity hairstylist or something like that. And Montel was like, I know somebody, I'm not really sure how it happened, but I'm glad it did. And then when it was over, it seemed like it seems like they haven't had a conversation to really talk everything out, but they've come to an understanding that they're willing to push it aside for the time being. And 
Lauren told Montel, when you get back in town or when I get back in town, I think one of them have to travel. Let's really sit down and let's figure out where we went left. And Lauren's thing is because I really feel like there was a third person involved that sort of was the puppet master that created the, situ the, the problems between us. And Montel sort of sees it now. I see it. So let's talk it out and let's really figure out where, you know, where we went wrong and how we can kind of be friends and come back together and be cool. Um, so I thought that was great. I always love to see people come together and making up and all that good stuff. Okay. Now, the next big shock, this was a good episode. The next big shock of the episode was my baby Sky. I, yeah, let me tell y'all something. I don't know if y'all, because I wasn't doing reviews um, last, was I doing reviews last season? Yeah, I did. I reviewed the show last season. I did. Did I? Or did I start with g -Sack? I don't remember if I reviewed the show last season, but I love Sky. I've always loved Scott's personality going back to season one. I always feel like he's very calm when he's pissed. He's the type of person when he gets pissed off, I would be afraid for whoever he's pissed off at because Sky is not, I don't think there's a whole lot of gears with him. I think he go from park to drive. Like I don't think it's first gear, second gear that he's so calm and quiet about shit. But when he blow honey, so Scott's, Seems like he's not a regular on the show this season. You know, he's not in the intro or anything like that. But he did make a cameo. Um, and the cameo was with him, Q, and Oliver. So let's talk about it. It started off with Sky and Q. And Q's thing was, I invited Sky down here because I want to just... He said, you know, even though me and Cameron talked, I'm still just not really happy with weird things, with how things fell out and weird things left off. Because I still feel like there's some shit that, eh, you know, don't make sense. He said, um... I really want to find out about this whole rumor about me taking care of Cameron, Cameron, me playing, paying his bills when he was sick, that kind of thing. And so come to find out, Scott's thing was, I told Cameron that I heard it from somewhere else. I never told him I heard it from you. He said, and we had a conversation about it, but I never said I heard it that you told me. I said that I heard the same rumor. <coughs> Excuse me. And Q's thing was, okay, because he brought you in it and he brought Devon in it, basically saying that y'all, you know, basically saying y'all heard Q say it. So at this point, we still don't know where the fuck the rumor came from, okay? I don't know, fell out the sky, who did, who said. So then Oliver, Oliver rolls up. And they do the introductions and all that good stuff. Q, you know has to go film something for his show, leaves it to him alone. And Sky basically confronts Oliver about the rumors that he hooked up with Dewan. I'm going to cut through the bullshit, okay? Basically, Oliver's thing is, look, I really didn't want to talk about it. And it sounds, again, that he didn't really want to bring it to the show or put it on camera. He said, because it just wasn't that serious. It wasn't that important to me. He said, but here's the deal. Dewan reached out to me and tried to get with me multiple times. I did not hook up with him. It did not go any further. End of story. He was like, I ain't trying to break up no happy homes. I ain't trying to mess up what they got going on over there. They are happy. They got their dog. They got their apartment. And they are living in La Vida Loca. Leave me the fuck out of it. That's what I got from, from Oliver. Now, the other thing I got from Oliver, though, was Sky now is trying to find out, well, where did the, well who told it? You know, how did it, because I'm thinking the same thing. How the fuck did everybody know? Because it seemed like everybody on the cast know about this whole Dewan situation. So I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, well, where did it come from? You know, who said it, where, how, what, where? And once again, it kind of sounds like it goes back to Gardini. Because Oliver's thing was, I ain't tell but two people about it. And one person don't even live in this state. The other person, so we know it's Gardini. Now, he said the person out of state is Ron with Cash. I don't know who that is. Or Alice, Ron with Alice. Gardini don't rhyme with Alice, so I'm thinking he's talking about the other person he told, and I guess we're supposed to know who. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't catch that that clue, Oliver. But I did catch that Gardini is the other. He said, and his thing is, I'm not gonna sit here and say Gardini's name and throw him under the bus like that. But Sky ain't stupid. And Sky know that <clears throat> he pretty much has figured out that the rumor came from Gardini. That's who's saying it. That's who's spreading it. But I, so then Sky was like, Well, would you be willing to sit down and talk with Devon? And he was like, Why? He was like, I, Devon, he was like, I don't have nothing. He said, first of all, no. I, he was like, I will do it, but I don't want to do it. I don't feel like there's a need to do it. He said, but if I do it, Devon and Devon will be in a room and Gardini. Because once we have this conversation, I want it to be in 
done. I'm not going to keep doing this back and forth. But it sounds to me like Devon flirted, tried to get with Oliver, and it didn't go further than the flirting. I could be wrong. But I would also be curious to find out the timeline. Because remember, if you go back to last season, they had some issues in their relationship early on in last season. That they did end up working out and now they are very happy. So my com I would be curious to know what was the timeline between when Gardine, I mean when Oliver, when Devon was flirting with Oliver and where Devon and Dewan were in their relationship. Because that's important. If they were having problems in their relationship or if that's when they were going through problems, then all this shit is mute. Now, if it's when they were happily living in their little home and posting on Instagram their happy life, then that's another conversation. But even with that, Oliver's thing was, I ain't trying to break up no happy homes. I ain't got shit to do with that. Like, that's them. Leave that over there. And for that, I could kind of, I, I understand where he's coming from. I absolutely do. So, then Q comes back into the room and they get to talking again and come to find out Cameron is going on his live Professing his love for Sky and Sky is like we we ain't no couple. We went out on a date. Like he asked me on a date and we went out on a date. But we are not a couple. We are not together. And honestly, he's connected to too many people in this little circle of friends that I'm not comfortable necessarily dating him. So they were all like, Oh, well, Cameron is on all on Instagram talking about how much he loves you and how y'all together and this that, and the other. And Sky ain't even Sky paid that shit does. He was just like I said, oh boy. So that's kind of where the episode ended, y'all. Um, it was a good episode. It really was. The, the production this season is so much better, y'all, with everything. Even in that scene, it was dark in one area, and Oliver was real slick about saying, you know, let's go over to the bar. It's, it's a little dark over here, so that they could get a better scene. The sound was good. Scott talks really low, but you could tell he was mic'd up because you could hear him. It was still light, but you could hear him. I just, you know... Kudos, whoever's the taking care of production, um, that the technical stuff, kudos, because it is so much better this season than it was last season and the season before that. Um, but with that being said, that was this episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments. Peace.